Hello everybody and welcome back to another Brawl Machine Battle Report. Today I am piloting Virus 2 into Reed's Heretic List. And uh, yeah, it's a pretty interesting game. So without further ado, let's get into lists. Alright, so uh, I decided to bring Virus 2 for this battle report. And uh, before I get too far into the list building, I'm going to point out something that I noticed while I was actually doing the editing for this video. And I think I actually noticed during the game as well that this list really doesn't need to be a Legions of Dawn list. It would be better in almost every way if I had put it in Forges of War instead. Uh, that was just kind of an oversight on my part when I started building a list. I was thinking Legions of Dawn and then somewhere along the lines my mindset shifted and I, this is what I ended up with that totally works better in Forges of War, but we're going to go with it anyways. So um, I brought Virus, as I said. Uh, I really, really like Virus. This was one of my first games with him. I think it might have been my second, but uh, he's just super fun. I love it that he has like a halfway decent gun, but he's also super capable in melee. He's very fast, which gives him a lot of options for the later game. Um, he's got Repo, obviously, he's got Bird's Eye, which is just a fantastic ability in general, and Veteran Leader Dawn Guard, which obviously doesn't matter much for this battle report, but does happen to exist. Uh, for his spell list, he's got some really, really good ones. He's got Synergy, which is just a fantastic spell. Um, he's also got Decel, which is pretty good to buff to help me get my army up the board, and uh, other stuff like Easy Rider for Pathfinder, and just a few other little tricks here and there are pretty useful. Uh, Twister is just kind of his nuke, and then lock the target can be uh, pretty pretty fun to just kind of screw over one model for a turn. Um, it's definitely useful from time to time. And then uh, for his feet, he's got Tides of War, so uh, whenever any of my models are destroyed or removed from play in his control range, um, after the attack is resolved, one of my models gets to move up to three inches, and a friendly Warjack in the control range gains a focus point. Uh, super, super useful ability, very versatile, gives you tons of different avenues of play, and I absolutely love it. So I decided uh, I was going to try and abuse the feat as much as possible and build a jack heavy list. I also wanted to abuse stuff like uh, bird's eye there. So uh, I brought a very battle group heavy list. I got a griffin here, which is just supposed to be kind of something that can reach out and poke something, threaten large chunks of the board. Doesn't hit super hard, but doesn't really need to. Uh, I brought a Hydra. I just absolutely love the Hydra's gun. I think the uh, the fact that it can just kind of store up focus and just have this super powerful gun that isn't too expensive to reload every turn either is just really, really nice. Uh, I brought the Manticore because the Manticore is just kind of a really good staple in Ret right now. Uh, hits like an absolute truck in melee. Covering fire templates are always useful. Just an all-around good jack. And then finishing out the battle group here, I brought the Siren. Uh, Siren, I was debating between either this or a Gorgon, I believe, was my, my decisions here. Um, I went with the Siren just because I thought the gun is really, really fun on this thing. Um, Death Driver is just a fun ability. Whether it's actually good or not, I really can't say, but I enjoy using it. So, uh, yeah, that was why I brought the Siren here. Going beyond the battle group... Um, I brought two Jack Marshals that aren't marshalling anything. Uh, the House Shield Artificer. Um, I brought this thing mainly, again, because it's just a fun model. I love Magno Bolt. I like the ability to... Well, I mean, he used to have Beatback, I'm pretty sure, but uh, I like that he also just has casually half-decent melee output. It's just a fun model to bring, and a little bit of a pain to remove sometimes, so... Next to him, I brought a Dawnguard Sire. Um, I brought this guy, uh, again, kind of just because I like the model. Righteous Vengeance is a cool ability. I didn't bring him as a Jack Marshal, so I didn't get to use his drive ability. But uh, Iron Sentinel makes him a little bit of a pain to remove as well. So I pretty much plan to run him almost like a Jack Marshal. I was going to keep him with one of my Jacks to kind of sit on a flag. Uh, while one of the Jacks, probably the Siren, could just poke with its gun sort of thing. And then I also brought a Ghost Sniper. Ghost Sniper is just a super fun model. Um, he's relatively good at earning back his points because he's got a really, really long range gun. So he can just plink models off the table every turn. And by the end of the game, he's usually done his job. Excellent flag camper in a lot of scenarios as well, because he can kind of just chill at the back and take shots all game, which is useful. And then lastly, the Arcanus mechanic. It's an empower bot for two points that also happens to repair warjacks and can also casually give them plus two on melee damage rolls. This thing is just amazing. So why wouldn't you bring it? 
So for this power report, I uh, chose to bring the Heretic, and there's a few things I really like about him. Uh, so first of all, he's got Sacred Ward, uh, so he can't be targeted by spells, and he's got Divinity, meaning he can't be knocked down or blinded, and Mauls never get the backstrike bonus from him, which makes him uh, pretty hard to assassinate. Um, on top of that, he's also got good melee presence uh, with PS13 auto hitting sword with dispel. Uh, for a spell list, he's really good at damage buffing, so he's got Fury, which gives plus 3 to damage, melee damage rolls, uh, but the model slash unit that gets put on, so for minus 1 defense. Um, he's got Gowls, which is a situational threat extension. He's got Hex Blast, or move pesky upkeep and anime on the model slash unit. Uh, then he's got Rebuke, which can be really nice in Brawl Machine just to take out uh, key model slash units by preparing them from giving or receiving orders. Uh, then he's got Wall of Fire, which is uh, good infantry control. Um, just put the wall up and then single wounds have trouble moving through it. Uh, his trump card is Reckoning, so it gives army-wide prey against the model slash unit um, when they kill a friendly warrior model in the Warlock's control range. Uh, and then when the model slash unit that killed that model dies, the prey can swap onto the next target. Uh, I brought... The clock trees for war beasts uh it's just a really good heavy it's harder to move um it's just annoying um on top of that uh it's a bit pillow fisted but with the heretic i can just really give it a ton of damage between fury and his trump i brought the gorehound for skirmishing to take out solos and threatening flags i then brought the rattler um, for some infantry clearing and on top of that uh he hits pretty decently for a light war beast with PS13s, and the heretic can just really make use of that by buffing up the damage. I then brought Weird Wendell. I wanted to test him out in Brawl Machine. Uh, he's got some fun rules. So he's got dodge. Um, so if you miss him, he gets a move two inches. Uh, he's got escapee. So when he's destroyed, he spawns in a gremlin swarm solo. And he's got practice shot, so he can ignore stealth if he aims and gains plus four range. Then he's got repo three. Uh, what's really fun is his slingshot has, uh, first of all, it has luck, so it's pretty accurate. You get to reroll the dice. And his, uh, his special roll is Havoc, though. So if it directly hits a model, you get to roll a d3. On a two, uh, the model just suffers POW 10 and upkeep spells and anime on its fire. On a three, it suffers minus two to damage rolls for one round. And on a one, the model hit is pushed d3 in a DV. Uh, direction determined by the deviation template. I then brought some Holloman. Um, I haven't really got to uh, try them out yet uh, since the dynamic update, um, so I wanted to see how they felt like uh, with Repo 3. And I kind of like them in the sense that they're just spammy single wounds um, that has some potential pickoff solos, and they can hit pretty hard with the Heretics buffs up. They also have some fun rules like Apparition and Ghostly. I then chose to bring the Lantern Men on them to give them Bloodbound. Uh, if I get into Attrition, just uh, when they kill a living enemy model with an attack, uh, they get to spawn a model into, back into their unit. Uh, it gives them a Scaring Mist, which can give the entire unit Concealment, which is uh, really nice with the other attachment I got on, Hol Hollow Holding, since it crosses Prowl. Um, and Ghostlight can uh, move enemy warrior models. Uh, one at a time. Uh, and then I brought Hollow Holden, who also got a pretty interesting buff during the dynamic update. So it gives the unit Pathfinder, um, which is something they were missing before. Uh, and on top of that, um, he's got the Poison of Fate ability. So you uh, flip, flip a coin um, on the heads, the weapons, the units, this model's weapons gain veins this turn, which means a model. Uh, a non-living model hit by Bane suffers minus two armor for one round. But if you get Tails, you get Weaken, which means a model, a living model hit with Weaken suffers minus two strength and defense for one round. Um, I like this a lot more because it uh, gives him more utility. Because uh, he can go after a living model on the turn he gets Weaken, or he can go against a non-living model on the turn he gets Bane, rather than what it used to be. On top of that, he's got Sniper, um, which can just be good for taking out single wounds. I then brought a unit of Nay Slayers. They're just really hard hitting armor piercers. Um, then you bring the Nay Slayer Warhorse with them, um, which gives them Playing Dead, which is fantastic since it gives them Fame Death, so they can't be targeted by ranged or magic attacks while knocked down. 
Um, a, uh, also, the models immediately come knocked down upon using that roll. Uh, Leapfrog, which can give them parry and annoyance. Uh, parry is really nice on this unit since they're cav and they got the lance rule. They always want to be charging. So this helps uh, degum them when they get caught up by enemy uh, units. Then uh, Tag gives the units Grievous Wounds, which is uh, really nice for this list. Um, just to provide some form of anti-tough and healing. Retribution, turn one. So I wanted the roll to go first, and uh, I'm planning out my turn here. So I put two on the Hydra just because I want it to be completely uh, fully loaded. Uh, that way, going forward, it'll just be able to do whatever it wants. Uh, I run the Ghost Sniper towards the bottom flag, and then I realize I didn't allocate anything to the Griffin, but I want him to be able to get up as far as possible. So that was a minor little mistake on my part there. Uh, so I'm just trying to figure out what I'm going to do with the mechanic and I decide I'm just going to kind of walk him into the middle of my army there so he can empower the griffin and then have it uh, fleet and run 14 inches just to just to threaten the entire zone nice and early on. Uh, so a small little misplay there but I make it work. So next I'm figuring out what I'm going to do with my siren and I decide I'm just going to kind of have him support the flag near the bottom there. Um, then. Uh, Reed updated one of the threat ranges he told me, so that's why you saw me backing up a model there. Um, next, I run the Sire base to base with the Siren, and from here I'm pretty much just running things around. I want the Hydra near the top zone, uh, as well as the Artificer, they're both just going to kind of be my support models over there. Um, I'll move the Artificer here in a second. And uh, the Hydra's whole idea here is he's just going to tow that zone and shoot stuff until he absolutely has to do otherwise. Um, and then Virus, I think he's mostly just going to walk up here. Um, I was considering casting, casting Twister, but I determined that it was way more likely to drift onto my own guys than onto Reed's. So I end up just repoing him, and uh, that's going to be pretty much my turn. Grimkin, turn one. So I'm going to start off here by appoing up the Holloman. Uh, for this match, I chose to take Ill Omens as my Arcana, which gives minus one to attack and damage rolls uh, for one round, which could uh, be good just to keep my infantry alive. And then I took the one uh, that goes stealth, um, just saw it since I saw guns in the other list. I'm going to then start off with moving the clock trees uh, behind the house to potentially get an alpha, since it's got flying, can move through the house, ignore all that and uh, cap the zone. Um, then I'm just going to work out what I want to do with Heretic. I'm going to move him behind the wall to protect him. I try to cast Fury on the clock, realize it's out of range, so I just end up putting it up on the Nace layers, and then I'm going to put a wall of fire in the center zone um, for zone protection. And maybe get some chip into the jacks. Um. I'm going to move up the Rattler. I'm going to respect all the melee threats, keep him out of all those. Uh, but he's still going to be in gun range, but unfortunately that's just going to happen. Um, I'm then going to go with the Holloman. The Hollow Holden World Bane, um, not going to be super relevant this turn. I think he's the only one in range of shooting anything. So I end up taking a pot shot at the Jack, and he just ends up uh, whiffing it. Um, which is fine. I didn't expect much. I just putting them up so they can get into screening positions and uh, maybe put in some work next turn. So I'm just going to repo them here. Uh, then I'm going to move the Gorehound up. He's going to thread in the flag, uh, hopefully remove some solos. And I'm going to have Weird Wendell uh, follow up, uh, decap the flag, and maybe shoot some jacks uh, with his uh, disruption gun. And then Nayslayers are just going to move up and use all fall down so they can't be targeted by ranged or magic attacks. Retribution, turn two. Alright, so looking at the board state after turn one here, uh, I have a few options I can go for. We left a lot of things out of my reach, but one of the first things I'm going to do is I'm going to have the Siren shoot a Holloman, and the plan here is to have it go and kill Wendell. Um, so I take my shot and I end up boosting and I hit and then I walk it into the back arc of Wendell and unfortunately here it misses. But I did manage to take the Hallman off the table which was nice. Um, 
so Wendell has a uh, dodge or something like that now, so he gets to move. Um, and now I have the ghost sniper go next, I believe. Um, let's see. Yeah, uh, the ghost sniper is going to go next here, and I just decide him or to have him shoot a Holloman. Uh, he aimed, and then unfortunately I rolled snake eyes, so he doesn't even get to swift uh, swift movement or whatever it's called that lets him swift hunter. Uh, I move the sire up to be base to base with the siren, and I kind of leave that side of the board there. Uh, next, I have the Hydra go, and uh, the Hydra is kind of just eyeing the clock up there. Um, I'm going to have him boost to hit because I just want to make sure I do. Um, and I do hit the dice, or the damage is dice off three. And um, I end up rolling pretty poorly, unfortunately. I do like two damage to him. Um, which is a pretty rough start to the turn, but I guess it could be worse. I at least got a Holloman. Um, so now I'm kind of just eyeing those Holloman near the front and center there, and I figure, you know what, Virus can deal with these guys himself. Um, he ignores concealment and all that stuff, I'm pretty sure, from uh, Bird's Eye View. Uh, or maybe he didn't. I honestly don't remember um, what the what the reasoning was on having Virus do this himself, other than he has a gun. So I start buying shots. Um... I miss the first shot and I buy a second and I actually manage to take one of them off the table. Um, at least I'm pretty sure I do. We haven't removed. Yeah, I did remove one of them. And then he just repos back um, and I put up D cell. Uh, I was considering my feet here, but I decided I'll hold on to it for another turn. Uh, so now I'm going to have the mechanic go next here. I want the manticore at full focus um, because I was considering having him pop a bunch of shots into I believe the Rattler was my my thought process at this time so or possibly just some of his Holloman and the Rattler um, so now that the Manticore is fully loaded um, I have him walk into the zone in a second here and don't know what we were figuring out here oh I was figuring out my targets right because at first I was going to use him to finish more Holloman um, but I decided it, it, taking down the Rattler a little bit would be a good idea. So I just nudge him up a little bit and I start rolling into the Rattler. Um, so I miss the first one, I hit the second one, and I boost damage and do something like 9 damage, which is pretty solid. Um, I boost the third and I hit, but unfortunately that one does absolutely no damage to him, um, which is a little rough. Uh, so next, I want to try and remedy the kind of lack of damage I've been doing here. So I have the Artificer go up to shoot the clock with a Magno Bolt. And um, I do hit, but I end up only doing one damage to the thing, which is pretty rough. So overall, I just have a pretty rough turn for shooting here. Uh, the last model that has to go is the Griffin. And uh, the big thing with the Griffin here is, while he has a pretty good threat... I do have to respect the Nayslayers, which have also a pretty good threat and hit really, really hard. So um, I don't want to throw any pieces away too early because I know I had a pretty rough turn for shooting, so it wouldn't be a great trade. Uh, so I just kind of move them up a little bit and pass. Grimkin, turn two. So right here I'm going to apo the Holloman. And I end up rolling Bane again uh, for Hollow Holden, which is uh, pretty useful here because there's a lot of jacks. And I choose to drop Fury uh, since I don't, the Nades aren't going to get anything this turn. And I would rather have the Fury up because uh, the Rattler might go into something. Uh, so I end up going with Weird Wendell. Uh, he's going to sh uh, shoot the Griffin there. Uh, he misses the first one, but because of luck, he gets to re-roll. Um, I believe he hits, uh, DB8, uh, he gets the minus two to damage on the jack, and he gives it disruption, which is the key part. Uh, then he just repos onto the flag. Um, and then I'm gonna have the Gorehound charge the jack, hopefully get in some damage. Um, so right here, I'm going to roll to hit. And I boost it since it's a charge roll. I pull it, uh, which unfortunately puts it in contesting range of the flag. And I'm going to do a decent chunk of damage. Nothing crazy. Right here, we're just having a rules discussion, seeing if uh, 
um, disruption affects oracular vision and it ends up doing that, so uh, pretty handy. Uh, but again, uh, do pretty well on the damage for two dice. Um, then I'm just going to work out what else I want to do this turn. So, so I'm going to have uh, the Rattler go. He's just going to move up there and put up counter charge uh, using his Animus. And then I'm going to have the Naysayers go. And they're just going to move up cautiously to be relevant next turn. And they will use all fall down again so they don't get shot. Then the Heretic's going to move over there and he's going to cast Fury on the Hullaman to help with their damage output. Right here I'm, I'm putting down another Wall of Fire, just putting more chip into the Jax since he's got the extra Fury. And then he'll camp the rest. So I'm going to have the Hullaman go charge, uh, charging up the light uh, Jack up there. And the rest are just going to make a run move. So I'm going to uh, start do the ones charging into Jack. Uh, pretty much all of them hit. I just blow up the damage roll. Uh, uh, sorry, only one hit there, but I did blow up the damage roll on that one. And then I'm just going to repo them so they're not uh, sitting ducks. I'm going to have the clock go, and he's going to spray the solo. Uh, and I believe he ends up putting up time stutter for the minus two speed, because he's already going to be in charge range anyways. Uh, so that can be helpful. Or time lock, not time stutter. And I'm going to boost the hit on the solo. Just working out exactly where I want him in the zone. I want to put him in range of one jack, but not two. Because uh, he should be able to live with his time stutter ability. I end up paying the solo. Um, I think I decide not to boost because I need enough for my animus. And I end up killing him, which is uh, pretty nice. Retribution turn three. Okay, so this turn is a lot going on. So first of all, I'm upkeeping synergy. I'm fully, or I'm giving one to the mana core, one to the griffin, and I'm holding on to three. Um, so I have a lot of things that I want to do here. So I first have the mana core kind of walk into the back of those hollow in there. So my plan here is he's going to counter charge me and probably not do much because I'm a manticore and then I get to pummel him. Um, he ends up doing ridiculous amounts of damage with the Holloman free strike that I eat and the, uh, the rattler's charge. Um, he does a crazy amount of damage and actually takes out one of my arms. So then we roll to see which arm I put into the hollow man because I did, uh, I did charge, I, I guess. Um, and we end up putting the good arm into the hollow man, which sucks even more because that's just one less powerful attack I get to put into the rattler. So, um, I absolutely demolish the hollow man. He's completely off the table. And I think I put my weak arm into the other hollow man, but I end up missing here. Yeah, that's exactly what just happened. Um, so I just start buying attacks into the Rattler, trying to see if I can do a decent chunk to it here. Um, and so I, I, let's see, how do I do here? Um, I miss the first attack into the Rattler. Um, and then I deal something like seven damage to it. Um, so that was a little disappointing. Uh, Virus's turn here, and I'm going to pop my feet and try to lock target on Clock, because Clock being able to teleport is a bit of a problem if I want to actually remove it. So um, I was debating by or, or uh, boosting the damage or the attack. I was going to boost the damage, and I end up failing the attack roll, which, of course, just kind of sucks. Um, and then I just take a couple shots, I think. Um, I think my idea was try and, uh, try and cripple it with a shot so that way it has to use its teleport before my Hydra can go in. Uh, I don't do that, I end up doing something like 4 damage. So next I'm gonna have the mechanic go, I believe. Um, and I've got a few things I've gotta figure out here because the mana core didn't do enough. Viros didn't do enough. I, at this point, I'm going to have two uh, enemy war beasts kind of in my face that I haven't been able to remove. 
Um, so the mechanic threw a focus on the Hydra, which is now charging the um, hi or Clockatrice here. And um, I end up hitting both of my attacks, I believe. I was boosting to hit the first one, um, and then the second one I just got lucky and I hit. So um, I do a decent amount of damage and somehow avoid crippling it to this point. Uh, so now I trigger chain attack, and here I have to decide whether I want to headbutt or throw. Um, I end up going for the throw to try to get him out of the zone, uh, because I figure either way if I cripple he's going to get to teleport, so it won't matter. Um, and the odds of me not crippling were relatively low, because at this point he had a pretty spread out damage grid. Uh, so I spend a lot of time deciding on the throw versus versus headbutt here, and uh, like I said, I'm pretty sure I end up going with the throw here. So I succeed at the like picking him up roll, and then we just roll the distance on it in a second here. And I do actually succeed at getting him out of the zone and also out of the camera, but uh, he's kind of been chilling out of the camera most of this game anyways. So uh, we're just looking up the rules there because we don't actually know how throws work. Um, and pretty soon we'll, we'll move the model there. So that's something that I guess could have went worse. At the very least the clock is going to be in a weird situation. Um, because it's real only target is going to be the Hydra which I guess is fine. Um, so next um, I end up doing no damage to it on the throw. Uh, so next I am worrying more on the bottom side of the board here. Uh, it's also worth noting at this point that I completely forgot I even had synergy going, not that it's affected anything so far. Um, but I have the Sire charge the Gorehound, and I also have him go base to base with the Siren, uh, just because I wasn't really sure what the Siren was doing yet. Um, and I have a pretty good mat here, so pretty good odds to hit, and I do. Uh, and then I do some ridiculous amount of damage, like 15 damage to it, which was really, really nice. Uh, I don't know if I've rolled that yet and I was deciding what to do. I think that is the case here. Um, so now I'm figuring out what the Siren's going to do. Um, and I have him kind of go in between the Gorehound and Wendell. Unfortunately, he's just out of Wendell. I was measuring there to see if I could get them both in, uh, but unfortunately, no can do. So... Um, I punch the Gorehound starting with my light weapon, I believe, um, and I end up doing enough to kill, I believe, just on the first attack, so my other one kind of just chills there. Uh, the next thing that I have is the Ghost Sniper, um, so the Ghost Sniper, again, I just, his goal of this game is just to kind of plink models off the table, not that he's been doing a good job so far, but he exists. So I think I just have him shoot a Holloman. Um, I don't even remember which one I have him shoot. That one there. And he plinks it off the table and then Swift Hunter's up. Uh, so now I've got to figure out the Griffin. The Griffin's got a few things engaged to it. Um, but I also really want to take out the Rattler. So um, I also wanted to tie up the Naze ideally here. But I think I decide against that. I end up going to the Rattler and... Um, I do, of course, eat another free strike from a Holloman here, which I really should be respecting at this point because I take another 5 damage from that one. Um, so we'll see me moving that in a second because, like I said, I spent a while figuring this out here. Um, and Reed's going to roll the damage here. Like I said, I think he does something like 5 damage to me, um, which thankfully I believe doesn't cripple anything. So I use go for the shield first. I hit and I end up doing no damage on that. Uh, but then I take the Halberd, I boost a hit, um, and then I boost the damage as well. It's dice off 3, and I end up getting uh, 10 damage to the 6, which uh, takes it off the game. I score up 1 on the top zone, and uh, pass the turn after that. Grimkin, turn 3. So right here, um, I'm doing pretty okay on the attrition game. Well, like all my nays are alive and they're in charging range of jacks, which is just great uh, So I'm just working out uh, What I want to do here because I need to get in a lot of work this turn uh, So I end up apoing the Holloman having them charge uh, The Manticore does a good chunk of damage um, But it doesn't end up killing um, Which is 
or sorry, they do end up killing there, uh, which is pretty nice, so, so I don't have to put my uh, naysayers in them. Then the virus will uh, feed, will move that uh, griffin. Uh, so I'm going to have to have my naysayers take that out. Um, I don't want to be leaving Jax alive this turn. Also working if I can get some in on Virus, because if I can, that's a pretty easy assassination, but uh, he's out of range, so he's safe. Right there, I just shot with Wendell. Um, he didn't end up doing much. Um, did a bit of chip into the jack, I believe. Um, go with Heretic, put Fury on the Nayslayers, make sure it takes out the light, and put Wallify in front of Virus, uh, just because I know he's going to want to move up and do some work, so it's good to punish him for that. Um... I put the heretic outside of Virus's charge range, um, but what I neglected to do is I uh, forgot about his feet, um, which can move himself up. Uh, so you can see me messing up there because I kill the jack, um, and then Virus is going to move up, and the heretic's suddenly in a lot of danger. So I'm then going to repo the naysayers to hopefully help with my mistake. Just put him in front of Virus, as much stuff in front of Virus as possible, and hope Heretic can take the pushback there. Because I'm looking pretty well as long as I can keep Heretic alive uh, this coming turn. Retribution, turn four. So going into turn four, I decided my best bet was going to be assassination here with the uh, little free move I got on Virus. I debated whether or not I was going to keep Synergy, but I decided that I would. Uh, that the plus one would be pretty useful here. So now I'm just figuring out the game plan here. I know the Hydra has to remove one of the models in the way, one of the Nacelers there. Uh, I think it was the bigger one that I needed to get out of the way. And um, other than that, everything else was just going to be supporting this assassination run. It was very much all or nothing. I just wanted Virus to go in, kill Heretic, call it a day, and do it with as few as few uh, resources as possible needed because obviously that higher odds. So the Hydra's taking a shot here and I end up removing the uh, the Nace there. I have um, the Siren go. This part didn't really matter much, but I have him smack Wendell and uh, pretty sure I just pretty easily take Wendell off the board here. Um, and then I put his second smack into the Gremlin Swarm that spawns. And if I remember correctly, pretty much the same result. I just take that right off the board. So if by some miracle I fail the assassination and virus survives, I guess I'm still in the game on scenario. Um, but of course, the Hydra having to shoot last turn means I'm not in a great position in the top zone. So it doesn't really matter. I have the Ghost Sniper go and take a shot and he misses. So that was unfortunate that I didn't get that little bit of chip. And then I run Sire over to the flag. And now it's all on virus. So... I'd already measured out the line. Um, I do end up eating a free strike from that Nace Slayer there, which he'll roll in a second here, but I don't think it actually does anything. Um, I'm pretty sure it actually misses. And uh, here we go into the actual attack. So I'm boosting the charge attack roll because I really don't want to miss. I hit, it's dice off one, and I get five damage, which is painful for the start of this. Um, I buy, I hit, and I boost again. I end up doing seven damage on the second one. I miss an attack, and then I buy another one. I hit, and I manage to take him off the board here. And uh, that's game. And that wraps up that battle report. Virus 2 versus Heretic. Uh, it was a pretty interesting game because I, I was kind of up on scenario the entire game, but down on nutrition, so I was in this weird situation where I was both winning and losing most of the game. Uh, being able to pull the assassination at the end was just uh, pretty convenient timing on my feet. I even said to my opponent during that uh, last turn that I didn't move Virus up for the assassination run. I moved Virus up purely just so he could contest the zone, completely forgetting that uh, casters don't actually contest zones, so uh, it didn't end up mattering. If anything, it was a misplay on my part that ended up just being the winning move. So uh, it was kind of a kind of a weird one, but at the end of the day, it was a super high odds assassination. So if I'd been thinking of it, probably would have went for it anyways. 
Uh, but yeah, that wraps up this battle report. So I hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, please do drop a like down below and subscribe if you're new to the channel. The channel has been doing super well lately and we're really, really happy with the, uh, the way things have been going. So I'm glad you guys have been enjoying the videos and uh, until next time, peace.